78 Sports TV here with a very, very special guest, underrated trainer. Uh, hopefully, by the end of this interview, you'll know him a little better. Uh, this is the trainer of uh, WBA, middleweight champion of the world, um, Mr. Danny Jacobs. Um, how you doing today, Mr. Andre Rozier? Thank God for life. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, we're in 2017, and it looks like boxing will be starting off on the right foot for once in a long time. So I'm feeling good about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a big fight for uh, boxing, a uh, bigger fight for the middleweight division. Um, many people are talking about this fight as um, Triple G's first uh, big step up as far as fighting an elite middleweight, um, uh, but there are all there are still questions. The naysayers are, are concerned about Danny Jacobs' uh, uh, chin and can he deal with the punching power of Gennady Golovkin? Um, what do you say to the the detractors of, of Danny Jacobs? Well, first and foremost, this is definitely the biggest and and best athlete that. Uh, Triple G will be in the ring with, and he will have to prepare like he's never prepared before. Um, as for everyone who's talking about uh, Danny's chin, uh, let, let me just put it to you like this. Danny went down in two fights in his entire boxing career. Uh, one was, was the Pirov fight, which he boxed in, uh, in a situation where he was in a lot of emotional duress and his grandmother just passed away and um, it was a tough time for him. But nonetheless, even when he did get, uh, when he got caught with the shot, and I tell people this all the time, uh, he, he caught him and I was trying to get Danny to get up. I was actually yelling to him, get up. Because I knew that he could have gotten up. And uh, the referee started counting, and at the count of four, he stopped. And that's when when Danny jumped up and said, hey, what are you doing? I'm okay. I'm just, <laughs> I thought you were counting. I have at least for the count of ten before right. you count me up. And, um, you know, that was one of the things that had bothered us for some time. But um, going back to the fact that anybody and everybody can get touched and hurt. This we do know. But Danny has proven along with many bouts that he knows when not to be hit. And what you saw, which happened almost seven years ago, will not be happening on March 18th. Okay, okay. Um, what Do you see anything in the style of Golovkin that you guys can exploit um, stylistically. How how do you, as a trainer, approach going into a fight with a guy like Gennady Golovkin with all of the hype around him? Um, you know, uh, I know fighters get nervous, but do trainers get nervous? Well, we all get nervous, but the, the thing behind um, curtailing emotions is not to show it, and. Um, it's just as if one of my guys might have gotten caught in, uh, in the ring with a good shot. I'm not going to show any emotion about it. I'm just going to walk him through and make sure that he stays focused about it because this is the nature of boxing. You're going to get hit and you can be hurt. But you have to stay focused and keep your fighter's mind detailed and directed on the assignment at hand, and that is to win. And that is to win, to be focused and to be on point so you can be victorious in your fight. Okay. Uh, what did you think of Golovkin versus Kell Brook? Um, did you think, what, what did you think of the fight when it was announced? Going into the fight, what did you think of Brook's chances? And what did you think after the fight? Well, honestly, I never gave Brook a chance because I just thought that he was too small. And uh, he went from 147 to 160, which is a monumental jump to begin with. But when you're dealing with someone who can take a pretty good shot, a.k.a. Golovkin, 
you have to be able to really put it together and keep it going. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand, or I don't even know if they even see it, is that whenever you start firing and pushing Golovkin back, he starts to stall a bit. And we had the we had the wonderful moment of seeing that when he fought Curtis, my nephew. And Curtis backed him up in the fourth round, and this is what I intended Curtis to do from the very beginning, but he didn't. And uh, he had the firepower to make it a, uh, a different situation. But you have to be assertive. And you cannot wait for, you can't wait for an aggressive guy to get aggressive on you. Or right. you're going to have problems all night. Right. So literally, you have to keep the aggressive guy off balance. And nine out of ten times, being that they want to push you around and bully you, you have to bully them. And you have to be on point when you're being the bully and step around when you have some boxing skills to keep him off balance while you're making him uncomfortable. Yeah. And not to give away any game plans, but um, I might be hitting a little bit right now. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm glad you said that because uh, uh, that's pretty much my, uh, my my thinking as well is that Golovkin looks great coming forward, okay? But making him fight going backwards, fighting off his back foot, it, it's a it's a different. He's a different fighter. He's still good, but he's a yes, different. He's a yeah. He's a different fighter going backwards, and I just don't understand why more people don't uh, bring you the fight to him. Um, you, know, you know what it is, Kevin. Sorry for interrupting, but a lot of people don't want to dig into the cold. I, I, I liken it to those old karate movies when they when they were preparing themselves and they used to have the big giant pot of hot coals and they used to stick their hands in it and right. they had to keep doing it until the hands became like rock. Right. A lot of people don't want to dig their hands in the coal. And to, to get down and dirty with it, sometimes you're going to have to Put your, your, your fears, put your second thought aside, and you're going to have to man it up and drive that message home. You got to push, you got to shove, and you got to dig. And um, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite fighters, uh, you know, I call them, I call a lot of uh, these fighters my nephew, and they call me Uncle Dre, uh, is Andre Ward. And Andre is not a big puncher. We know he's a, an incredible boxer, but he can get down and dirty too. Right. And he and he don't care about it. So you gotta have some dog in you to to protect the backyard. If not, put a bunch of poodles back there and let everybody come and rob you out. That's right. Uh, absolutely. Um, how, give us uh, give the people some uh, background on yourself. And how long you've been working with Danny, and how you became his trainer? Well, I met Danny when he uh, started boxing at, at fourteen. Uh, my dearly departed brother Victor Roundtree, uh, he was Danny's head trainer, and I was training to Dom Ali. So we decided to work together. So we had a, a core team, and uh, Vic and I worked with Danny and Saddam. And unfortunately, uh, Vic passed away due to a, a battle with diabetes. And um, from that moment on, I, instead of being his co-trainer, I, I became his trainer. And uh, I've, that's been since, um, since he was 14. So we're talking about 15 years now. Right, right. Okay. Uh, going back to the, the Pirog fight, um, I know you mentioned Jacob's uh, grandmother passing away a week before the fight. Um, was did, did, at any time uh, with the Pirog fight before the fight, did you guys feel at all that Danny might not be uh, mentally ready? Well, you know, I didn't want him to go on with the bout because I knew it was a it was an emotional burden on him, and he was a young man, and um, his his grandmother his, was a mother figure to him. He lost her to death. And um, you know he would have he would have some emotional breakdowns in the ring, and I was like, well, this is not good because my boy is not 
focus now. Or he, he kept saying, no, no, I, I, can, I can handle this, I can handle it. But we really should have not taken the fight there. We shouldn't have. Because everybody's different. Some people can, can box under emotional, you know, duress. And, and they still did have a tough time with it. And uh, what we should have did was we should have pulled him out of the fight and gave him time to mourn his grandma. But we, we listened to him, and he said he wanted to go on with it, and uh, we followed through. And even with that, even with those moments um, when he just wasn't there, he still was doing well in the bout. Uh, other than the first round, I had him winning the fight uh, handily at that point until he got caught with the shot and went down. Right. So, needless to say, um, we could have made a different choice, but it is what it is, and uh, we had to put it in the bank and move on and, and do what we did and climb the ladder and get back to where we are. All right. Let me ask you something about that. Do you think, um, you know, I know it was, you know, uh, it was a long time ago, but do you think that stylistically that Pirog is a better fighter than Golovkin? I think Pirog was a, a better boxer than Golovkin is. Um, Golovkin likes to come and, and, and basically fight. Um, you can't, he, has a, he has some great fundamentals, don't get me wrong. He, he has a good jab. Uh, he has uh, good footwork when he's cutting people off. But once again, these are things that are happening because people are submitting, submitting to his offensive assault. And um, I've watched many a fight when we were preparing for Golovkin, uh, when Curtis fought him, I, I, I would watch and study him, and I kept telling Kurt, I said, Kurt, if you would back him up, if you back him up this entire fight and you just touch him with some of your big shots, He's going to respect you because he can punch. And um, he didn't do that from the beginning. Curtis never lost the first round of any fight until the Golovkin fight. So at that point, I'm saying, oh, listen, he needs to be more aggressive. He's a shorter guy, and you and I both know you can't be boxing like you're 6 feet tall when you're 5'7". Right. If anything, you've got to get a little bit shorter. And the moments that he did show some aggression, he was very successful. So my thing is this. Danny and Kurt are two different fighters. Danny is a long, mobile athlete. But he can punch. He has what, what we call that snapping punching power. Because it comes quick and pop, and then it, it, it hurts you. And what we plan to do is to utilize that long snapping power while avoiding the on rushes and the aggressive um, assault that Triple G is going to try to put together. Danny's going to make him miss a lot of punches because that's what we're going to be working on. And he's going to be a lot more elusive, but we're going to work what we need to inside and out. Okay. Um, now that now that the fight is signed, sealed, um, can you tell the fans what what was taking so long for this fight to get signed? Uh, we understand uh, from media reports that Danny was uh, uh, not okay with the twenty five percent of the, uh, the, the the you know the WBA's um, policy of giving the uh, the mandatory twenty five percent and Golovkin getting seventy five percent. Um, how did that come to uh, an end in making this fight happen? And uh, was was there any time that Danny felt like, or you guys felt like this fight wasn't going to happen? Well, there were moments. Um, we didn't want it to go to the first bit. I, I honestly, between the WBO and the WBA, I'm like, these sanctioned bodies, they really do horrible business. Uh, the WBA wants to have a super champion and a regular champion. But when it comes time to put them in the ring together, you're taking sanction and fees from both of them, and it's the same amount. Why wouldn't you make it even money? Right. So off the top, I think it's 
totally ridiculous. That's why at the time we said we're not accepting twenty five seventy five. We paid our sanction and fee. Since he had that regular title, Danny has paid his sanction and fee like a good champion. And now when it came time for them to both make some money, the WBA is saying, oh, well, you know, if this goes to the first bid, we're going to do a 75 25. Okay, listen, you guys, we've done the right thing. Why don't you make it 60 40? No, no, it's going to be 75 25. Okay, you know what? Then we don't have to deal with it. You can take your title and everything else and, and keep walking with it. Right. But everything else involved wanted this fight to happen. We wanted the fight to happen. But. We have to make sure that everyone knows this is a business. You know, this is called this is called prize fighting for a reason. You know, it's not called ego fighting, it's called prize fighting. You're out there making money for your efforts in that ring. So and as you can see, a deal was made, so it was always there. Right. We right. just had to open up and make it happen. But I'm glad it came down to the bottom line where it did happen. And everybody involved is happy. So now these two combatants can get in the ring and they can entertain the, the many fight fans who will be you know, tuning in to see it. No doubt about it. Um, you know, with Golovkin's uh, style of, of, you know, pretty much, he's a good boxer, but he's pretty much a knockout puncher. Okay, um, what happens if Danny gets hurt in this fight? Do you guys encourage him to push through and continue to fight? Or, you know, I mean, I have to ask this question because in boxing today, you know, it's been like I've seen a lot of funny stuff in boxing. A guy get hurt and, you know, the fight getting stopped or uh, he don't want to continue. Um, so are, are, are you basically the, the real question I'm asking you here is this. Are you guys coming to win no matter what? We're coming to leave it in the ring. That's, we're, coming to, we're coming to get those belts, and we're coming to be the, the, one, the one team that came to, to defeat Triple G. We're not coming in there just to be in the ring. Danny is an elite fighter. Danny can punch, and Danny is hungry. And more so than anything else, Danny has fought the hardest fight he could ever fight in his life. There's no boogeyman left in this world for Danny. Danny fought cancer. It almost killed him. And he's still here and became world champion. Who is Triple G after that? Right. A mortal man. He's not God. He's not King Kong. He's just another man. And yeah, Danny can get hit with a time he get hurt. But Danny's going to get up if he goes down. And he's going to get up and start working. And he quiet as his cap. We've never seen his opponent really put under a pressure situation. Mm -hmm. He will be in a pressure situation when he fights Daniel on March 18th. All right, all right. That's what I need to hear. I want to thank you for your time, Mr. Rozier. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to let you get back to your day. And um, I'll definitely call you again uh, before fight time. Not a problem. I'm here at a Happy beginning to the new year, and we getting ready to rock this road. <laughs> That's right. It's time to get down and dirty. No doubt about it. Thank, thanks a lot. All right. Take care, guy. All right. Peace.